Hello again everyone. Just a cheeky midweek video this time. Uh, what I'm going to be showing you today is how to remove lens flare from your photographs. So lens flare can, some people like it, you know, some people actually want to keep it in the photo. Other people don't, uh, so it's completely up to you, it's a personal preference. Um, but I'm going to show you a technique called frequency separation in Photoshop, which will, if you want to, it will allow you to remove that. Um, and yeah, it, it depends on the lens that you're using, um, how much lens flare you're going to get. Uh, even with good lenses, um, I've just got the, uh, the Nikon 24 to 70 millimeter, which is a really, really good lens. It's got some great coatings on the lens to stop this kind of thing. But when you're shooting directly into the sun, like I was um, in the Peak District last week, uh, you're going to inevitably get a little bit of lens flare. Um, so, what we're going to do, I've already got it open now in, in Photoshop, as you can see. Um, I've done my general edits in Lightroom and Photoshop, um, so I'm not going to go through those. If you do want to see some of my editing process, though, you can see... Um, the previous week's video I did a little bit of editing at the end so um, you should see a link in uh, in this video now to go and watch that video if you want to and that'll show some of my editing process so you'll see we've got a little bit of flare just in the the top area up here um, it's a tiny little patch and we've got a slightly bigger area down here um, this area up here that's not going to be too difficult to deal with at all. We're actually just going to use the patch tool to get rid of that. So select the patch tool from over here on the left. You can also press J on your keyboard. And just going to draw around that flare area. And all we're going to do is just move that selection to an area that kind of lines up with it. So if we go up the hill here, If we line it up around about there, that looks okay to me. And then just deselect, and that's looking good to me. It's not going to work with every picture. All, you know, it completely depends on the picture that you've got. But in this particular instance, we had an area further up the hill, which allowed us to just clone that area into the area that we wanted to remove. So it works really well. So you're going to have to play around with your images and see what works and what doesn't. Now. The flare down here, this is going to be a lot more tricky. We can use the patch tool to get rid of this. If we kind of just go around this look with the patch tool and then there's no obvious place that we can kind of patch this from. You know, if I let go of that now, it's just going to look terrible. So what we're going to do, we're going to go a little bit more advanced with this one. And we're going to use, like I said, frequency separation. So what we need to do first is just make a couple of copies of our entire layer. So con uh, Command J on your keyboard, that'll make two copies of that layer. And we'll call the first one color and the other one texture. So what we're gonna do is just hide the texture layer for a second. And uh, we'll go to color and we're just gonna apply a Gaussian blur. So go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and it will depend on the size of your image, how much uh, the radius needs to be, but you're looking for something around about, five, well, around about how it looks there in the picture. So for me, five, maybe I'll just go a little bit more. I might, I might go to six. So it just softens everything a bit. Uh, and you can experiment with this. Um, you may maybe try larger radiuses, smaller radiuses, see what works best. But I'm going for about that for now. Um, and then what we want to do on the texture layer, if we just put that back, we want to actually get rid of, we, we, all we want literally is the texture on that layer. So like the, the kind of the fine edges and things like that. So now we're gonna go up to image, down to apply image. And then everything will go great and you'll get this little pop-up window with some parameters that you can change. 
Now, it depends if your image is 8-bit or 16-bit. You can check that by going to image mode and down here, if it's, uh, it's probably not going to be 32, but it's most likely going to be 8 or 16. So mine's 16, and um, if I go back to apply image, we'll talk about why it matters if it's 8 or 16 in a moment. First of all, in layer, we're going to choose color. Um, and then, if you're using 16-bit, it needs to be on invert. If you're using 8-bit, you want it not on inverted. Uh, don't ask me why, I didn't come up with these. <laughs> if you if you Google uh, frequency separation, you'll find other tutorials for this. Uh, somebody worked out what settings you need when you're doing this, depending on your, your, your bit settings. And uh, yeah, not me. Um, if you using 16 bit you want to select blending and uh, that wants to be on add which it already is if you're on 8 bit settings that wants to be on subtract um, and then you've got scale and offset they're the other two kind of parameters that we're going to change uh, for me i'm not going to change them because i'm 16 bit if you were 8 bit you'd leave scale at 2 and you'd change offset to 128. so i've done all that i'm going to click ok and you'll see it's kind of got all the edges now in this weird gray mode. And what we're going to do is with that layer selected in our layers palette, we're going to click on the blend mode and we're going to go down to linear light. And now that looks how it did start with basically. If I just go back to my original and solo the layer, uh, it's exactly the same but we've got the blurred color layer and then we've got our texture layer on top of it. And what this means is now that we can work on the color layer without destroying our texture. So I'm actually gonna make a, another layer between color and texture and just call that retouch. And now I'm gonna use the clone stamp and I can clone areas of the blurred layer, the, the color layer, by selecting, say, this dark area here. And I can paint that in. So change the size of your brush, clone different areas until you've got a result that you like. I would normally take a bit longer on this, but I'm just going to do it fairly quickly. Maybe slightly bigger brush there. Um, and then for the bottom bit here down here, I might I might actually clone down here just for a kind of a dark area. So remember, you're not really cloning the texture here. It's more it's more the color that you're cloning. Because if I take that texture layer off, it's actually this that you're cloning. And that's not too bad, just for a quick demonstration. What I'm going to do now is it looks a little bit green still, even though that kind of looks a lot better. This kind of whole area here where the lens flare was, it kind of gave it like a green tinge to it. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to select the color layer. Um, and I'm going to select my lasso tool. Just go around that area that's a bit too green. And then I can go to uh, Image, Adjustments, Hue and Saturation, or you can press Command and U on your keyboard. And from here I can select, uh, I'll select the greens, bring the saturation down. That hasn't done too much because there's a lot of yellow in there as well, I would imagine. So let's go to yellow, bring the saturation down. Now you start to see the difference. So we're just going to blend that in so it kind of matches the uh, the stone, the rest of the stone in that rock. Click OK, deselect, and there we go. So using frequency separation just to get rid of some lens flare. And you can use that for other things as well where, where the patch tool or content aware fill where those are not really appropriate. This can be a really powerful tool. 
just to edit those uh, those areas because it allows you to work on the colors and the kind of the, the, the large scale background areas without affecting the, the fine texture that's above it on the texture layer. So if I just go back to the original, that's how it looked before and that's, that's how it looks now. So I think, yeah, looking a lot better. So I hope that's been useful. Uh, like I said, just a quick midweek video. It's my first midweek video. I'm going to try and do more of these. Um, fit them in between the main videos which I'm putting out on the Sundays and yeah if it was useful or you like the video uh, please give it a like uh, if you haven't already subscribed then uh, please subscribe and uh, as usual thanks for watching and hopefully see you again for the next video bye for now